I'm Bronte and this is my box truck. It is a 2001 Chevy Express and welcome. So this is my little like living room area. Um, the couch actually pulls out into about a full size bed. Um, most of the time I just leave it as a couch so it's nice to have all of this space. Um, but yeah, pretty simple. I just have two separate cushions. So when I pull it out, I grab this cushion, move it over. I've got a bunch of storage underneath. Um, I had to work around the wheel well, so I ended up doing like two levels of storage. So I just have kind of like my backpacks, my skis and snowboard gear all under here. And then shoes are in this little tiny cubby. Um, but yeah, I just wanted something super simple that wouldn't take up a whole lot of space. Um, but still wanted to be able to have a full size bed when I want to spread out. This is my little desk nook area. It's probably my favorite chill spot in the build because um, I've got my window here. So it's really nice when I need to get work done or want to do some journaling. I've got like a nice little spot to post up and sit and then like usually have a really pretty view out the window. Um, I also have another little bench here. So instead of doing a dinette, I thought it would be fun to have my desk also double as kind of like a dining area so that someone can sit here and eat and then someone can also sit here. Um, it's also a great place if I'm working, I can set my laptop here and then have my snacks here and then like just switch back and forth. Um, yeah, so I hang out in this spot a lot when Piper's not stealing my seat. Um, but yeah, this I actually found on the side of the road for free. I was driving by and I was like, huh, that's kind of a cool little desk. So I like pulled over, threw it in my truck and then put it in the build and it fit perfectly. Um, so it was supposed to be just kind of temporary until I found something else, but it literally fits perfectly. So I, I think it's just gonna chill here for a while. Um, and then I have all my Polaroids and like my favorite quotes and stuff. So this is just kind of my area like in the morning when I want to have my coffee and just zen out for a bit. Or like I said, I work remotely. So when I need to get work done, it's a good spot. And I've got plenty of outlets to charge my computer. Um, and then I built like some little shelves and whatnot. Um, so I can have my pens, my candles, my speaker. Um, it's just nice to have like a little productive zone and then I have like my books and journals and whatnot up here Spare blankets and that sort of thing, you know phone charger my scrapbooking supplies So it's nice to still have like a little office nook um, I write a lot So it was pretty important to me to have like a nice little workspace where I can just sit down and relax and get things done I think I first got the idea that I wanted to pursue van life um, last summer when I was literally working six jobs to try and pay for my apartment and they were kind of all over the place each job was in a different city and so I was constantly crashing on friends couches you know sometimes I wouldn't get off work until 1130 at night and would have an hour and a half drive to get home and so I was just constantly crashing at friends places and realized that I was constantly working and never at my apartment that I was like working so much to pay for and so I think it just kind of clicked like why am I doing this um, and I got tired of like never being home and then always feeling like I was invading other people's space but did enjoy the aspect of getting to travel to different cities all the time and so I think that's kind of when it clicked, like, oh, a home on wheels would be really convenient because then I don't have to worry about where I work versus where I live. And I don't have to be crashing on friends' couches. I can just bring my home with me wherever I go and have everything that I need and not have to constantly be living out of a suitcase um, and not be working so hard to just pay rent into an empty void. Um, and so that's when I really got the idea to start kind of looking into vehicles. Um, I at first looked at like getting like a camp trailer to tow around with my truck, um, went to a couple like RV shows, looked at buses, sprinters, and then just kind of stumbled across the box truck. And the second I found it, I was like, yep, this is the one, this is my home and I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. This is my electrical setup. Um, this actually used to be an electrician's vehicle, so some of the wiring was already done. Um, this breaker panel was already there, and then this fuse box as well. So it kind of made things a little bit easier, but also a little bit more complicated when I was working on the wiring 
because I had to clean this up and try and figure out like where all the wires were going to. Things weren't really labeled. Um, so I had to take a lot of the wiring out, but then was able to still leave this. And then once I set up my solar panel, I was able to just wire that into here, which then connected um, all of these outlets that were already built in. And then these lights, which run off the starter battery, and then I went and put in, I have um, a 100 watt solar panel and then my monitor right there. And then I have a voltage meter here with like little um, cigarette outlet and then two USB ports. So if I need to charge my phone, that's where I plug that in. Um, this is like my little diesel heater monitor. So kind of wanted all of the electrical stuff to be in the same area, just to keep it nice and neat. Um, and then let's switch for my inverter over here. Um, pretty simple setup. Like I said, I just have the 100 watt solar panel and then one AGM battery that's 100 amp hours, nothing fancy, and then just hooked up my isolator as well so I can charge the battery with my solar when it's sunny or when I'm driving, I can charge it up that way as well. And then this is my closet space. Um, I really wanted somewhere that I could hang all of my clothes because I like to just keep it all organized um, and I wanted it to be open because I didn't want to have to deal with a door or anything. These hangers are super awesome. They have like little notches so you can put like 10 different items on the same hanger so it saves you a lot of space and then I have like all my jewelry hanging up here, little hooks for my hats and backpacks in the back, a little shelf for like my hats and socks and underwear and whatnot. But I just wanted it to be super simple and make it really easy um, to just, you know, grab my clothes and not have to deal with drawers and dealing with how to, you know, keep the drawers locked when I was driving and whatnot. So this is one of my favorite parts. And um, this back wall is actually hardwood oak flooring that my dad had left over from redoing uh, his kitchen. And I was working on the build in his shop and looked at it and was like, ooh, Dad, what is that stack of wood over there? And he looked at me and was like, oh, that's leftover hardwood flooring. You don't want that. You already have a really nice floor in your build. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about the floor. I want to use it for my walls. Um, so I put it in and it's tongue and groove. So it was really easy to build. Um, and then I planned on staining it, but I really liked the natural look. So I just left it um, totally natural. It's not finished at all, but I kind of like that. It gives it like a very cozy rustic cabin feel lot of warm tones. For work I lucked out and because of COVID and working remotely currently um, I work as a rep for a pet insurance company just kind of like stumbled across it on accident um, and then I also in the summers work for a really small winery um, just working at like farmers markets and selling wine um, so yeah I usually do that for like six months out of the year um, the farmers market typically runs from like March through October um, so I'll work that for a while save up a bunch of money and then um, can do my other job remotely as well so it works out as long as I budget and plan accordingly this is Piper he is one of my van life kittens um, He's currently chilling right now. I also have another cat who's hiding in the closet. He hates the outdoors, so whenever the door is open, he just goes in there and sleeps all day. But this little guy I keep on a harness because sometimes he likes to waltz out and adventure the outdoor world. I think it's a little hot right now, so he's sleeping inside. Um, and then this is my little hatch door. Um, luckily, it was already there when I bought the vehicle. I just repainted it, my favorite color blue. Um, but it makes it really nice if I am in the back and want to access the cab for any reason or, you know, if I'm parked at a sketchy rest stop and don't want to open my back door and reveal my house to the entire world, I can just come in and out of the house through this little pass-through door into the cab. And then you just kind of crawl through and try not to hit your head, which I have done a few times. Uh, also, I forgot to mention the floor, which is probably one of my favorite aspects of the build. Um, so this is actually the original hardwood flooring that was in the vehicle when I bought it. 
it was stained with oil and super dirty and a completely different color. I thought it was like a dark walnut color at first. And then I started sanding it down to refurbish it and realized that it's like this really beautiful kind of like warm cherry color. Um, so I had a palm sander originally and was trying to sand it with that. And then after cruising through about like three sheets of sandpaper, I realized that was not going to work. And so I rented a giant floor sander. And even using that, I think it still took me about eight hours to refinish the floor. Um, and by the time I was done, my dad called me in for dinner and I like literally my hands were shaking from using the floor sander all day. So I was like, I really want to eat the soup, but can you help me because I can't stop shaking. <laughs> So that was a fun project. I definitely took a day off from working on the build after working on the floor because my arms were wrecked. Um, but yeah, sanded it down. Um, and then after sanding it, I had to like sweep all the sawdust out, vacuum it. And then there was like a lot of grooves that literally went like straight through the floor. And so I got wood putty. And as I started um, wood puttying, I realized it didn't match the color at all. So I ended up getting the sawdust from when I sanded the floor, mixed it in with the wood putty, and then used that to fill the gaps so that it matched really seamlessly and didn't make my floor look all stripey and awkward. And then refinished it with a water-based polyurethane. Um, I tested out an oil-based. I did like a test strip under my kitchen area where I knew that floor area was gonna be covered and kind of like debated back and forth on which color I liked best um, and then decided I really liked just kind of the more natural feel of the water-based polyurethane so that's what I finished it with um, and yeah it was kind of fun there's still like oil stains and whatnot it's not perfect but I kind of like that it adds personality and it's an original part of the truck that got to stay in the truck so pros and cons of van life um, people always message me and they're like wow your life looks dope that's so awesome your life must be amazing and yes it is but there's also like things that you have to work with when living in a vehicle um so i'd say some of the downsides of van life that people don't typically think about are things like i like to snowboard and so um sometimes i'll be in areas that are really cold and even though i had a heater like that was my main concern before hitting the road was like oh do i have a way to heat the vehicle what you don't realize is the cold depletes your batteries really quickly. And so even if you have a heater, you don't always have the ability to run your heater because as soon as it gets dark out and the temperature drops, your battery also drops. Even though you've had sun all day and fully charged it during the day, that doesn't matter when it's cold at night. Um, so that was definitely a challenge that I had to face right from the get go. Um, your water also freezes when it's cold out. So even though I have a sink plumbed for running water, when it's really cold outside and you can't heat the vehicle, um, your water supply is gonna freeze. So I actually had to like go melt down snow so that my cats could have water. Um, yeah, so I'd say like there's just like a few things that you have to navigate and it's and it's adjustment it's a learning curve um, it's not all glamorous that people think it is um, you know sometimes you're in areas and you're like okay great where do I go to the bathroom um, so simple like everyday things sometimes take a little bit more effort to think about and plan ahead um, but honestly I wouldn't trade it for anything because on the flip side you get to travel to amazing places and um, kind of one of the reasons why I got into van life as well is I am a homebody. So even though I'm very adventurous and very outdoorsy and very social, I like to be able to come back to my own space and relax. And so being able to take my entire home with me is huge because I don't have to worry about like, do I have everything with me? Do I have everything packed and ready? Like everything's always here with me. I get to bring my pets traveling with me. So it's really nice having like that little turtle shell home that you can bring with you and you don't have to worry about like forgetting anything or you know, you go have a stressful day for some reason and your home's right there that you get to come back to and just have like your own place that's 100% yours that you're comfortable in. Cause I don't know about you, but I don't particularly like traveling and crashing in random hotel rooms. I would much rather like go somewhere super cool and then be able to come home at the end of the day, no matter where I am. 
So this is my kitchen area. Uh, this was the last part of my build that I put together because I was about to hit the road and realized that running water would probably be a plus. Um, so the countertop is a live edge um, cedar countertop that I built myself. Um, I got it at like a random lumber yard out in Eugene, Oregon. Um, it was super cool. The guy had like a bunch of different slabs and just like let you walk through and pick which kind you wanted. He had like pine, oak, cedar, um, and I've always loved cedar and it smells amazing. So I was like, yeah, it'll naturally freshen it up in here and then sanded it down. It did three coats of epoxy, made sure to pour the epoxy over the bark. That way the bark doesn't fall off. Um, and then since it's like a little bit more shallow than the frame that I built, I just, I like collecting rocks everywhere that I travel. So I just made this my little like area to put all my rocks and my sage and essential oil diffuser and whatnot. So at first I was like, oh no, I wish it, you know, filled the whole thing. But now I kind of like having like this cute little storage display area back there. And then for the sink, I spent forever trying to find a sink. Um, I was like browsing Amazon for hours and realized that the style sinks that I liked were really expensive. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if I want to dish out $200 on a sink. Um, but I kind of wanted something that would like go with like the rustic farm feel. So I found this like galvanized bucket and then just drilled a hole through and like got a drain kit and built a drain in it. And then, yeah, it was, a lot less intimidating than I thought it would be. I was really nervous cutting the hole and then realized it actually was not that bad and it works pretty well and was a lot cheaper. I think it cost like 10 bucks. So 10 bucks versus $200, you do the math. I think this was a win and I really like it and the handles kind of add to it and make it fun. And up here I have storage for my kitchen. So this is where I keep like all my pots, my pans, um, like my silverware and whatnot. And I wanted it to be like pretty easy with the cupboards. I didn't want to deal with having to like lift something and then worry about holding it up while I was grabbing my stuff or having it fall on my head. Um, I know you can get stuff that like props itself open, but it seemed too complicated to me. So I just did these slider tracks and then you, it, I don't know, it makes it super easy. Um, so yeah, this one is for like all my kitchen supplies and then this is my pantry. So all of my food is in here, you know, just rice and food things. Underneath my counter is more kitchen stuff. Um, so here is my fridge. It's just a cooler that you plug in and it has a fan so it'll sense when it gets too hot then the, the fan will turn on and keep everything cool. So it makes it really easy. Um, it's nothing fancy but it works and then if for some reason I'm low on power it's like a regular cooler that I can add ice to if I need to. Um, and then I have my little burner stove right here. It's just a little propane stove. It's got two burners. So then when I want to do my cooking, I just grab it, put it on top of the counter. Or if I want to cook outside, if it's like really nice out, then I can do that as well. Um, which is why I went with something that wasn't, you know, mounted into the counter because I wanted the ability to be able to cook inside and outside. And then for my sink, this was kind of like, last minute through this together before I hit the road. Um, but I just have like a foot pump sink and then I have two seven gallon jugs of water. Um, so I'll use one for my fresh water and then when it gets low, I'll switch it over and have all of that before I have to go refill. And then I just have like my little Napa bucket for my uh, gray water tank right now with like the drain hose and then it just goes through. The drain hose also has a plug on the end, which is nice if I ever, you know, need to stop the water flow for any reason but yeah it works pretty well and it was actually surprisingly easy to build i put the plumbing off till the last because i was like oh my gosh it's gonna be so hard i don't want to deal with like it leaking or breaking and then i watched like two youtube videos and like looked at some diagrams and it was actually a really fun project and way simpler than i thought it would be and it's definitely a plus having running water so yeah that's that so that is my tour of my little cozy cabin on wheels. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you want to see more of my build or travel my journey, you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is box.car.child. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.